This is the Lens Lab, and uh, we're going to be studying uh, real and virtual images and uh, things like uh, focal length, uh, image and object positions, uh, and uh, let's get to that. So, okay, uh, let's take a look at a mirror first, uh, a sort of a, a concave spherical mirror. Yeah, this is the, one of the things you're going to talk about. We're going to come up with a formula that works for mirrors and lenses and thin lenses and so uh, this is the surface that this is the uh, back of the mirror here and this this is called a principal axis it it comes off of the mirror at a right angle so uh, the first thing we're going to do uh, with a lens is to find uh, the focal length and uh, for for a mirror it's really very simple uh, we have the law of reflection, which you may have studied already in class, which says that the incident angle, let's take a flat surface, here's the mirror, and here's the normal to the surface, and the uh, law of reflection says that the incident angle and reflected angle are equal, which kind of makes sense. When you stand in front of a mirror, uh, and the mirror's over there, and you're over here, you see back over there someplace, and, and that's all that means. So. Uh, Law of reflection says the angle of incidence measured from the normal equals the angle of reflection from the normal. So you can think of this spherical mirror if you reduce the size, uh, just take a little piece of it here and say, I'm just going to look at this part and it's, it's almost flat for that little bit of distance. So here comes a ray of light and it's going to be parallel, this is called a paraaxial ray. It's going to come along and be parallel to the principal axis and it's going to strike the mirror at that location. So I'm going to draw a little normal here and of course that means the incident angle and the reflected angle are going to be equal. This angle is equal to this angle. Okay. <clears throat> now this mirror has a radius of curvature. We'll just label it big R. If I uh, this is the center of the curvature of this spherical mirror. And if you apply the law of reflection to each little piece of that mirror, you'll find that all the rays of light coming in parallel to the principal axis, parallel paraxial rays, all hit the mirror and they're all going to bounce off and they're all going to go through the same point. This is the focal point. And if you do a little math, you can almost see it without doing the math. That is, the focal point is, is half the radius distance from where the principal axis strikes the mirror. So uh, that's, that's pretty easy to find the focal length of a spherical mirror. And this is how the radius of the curvature of the mirror and the focal length are related. Well, we're not going to be dealing with mirrors. This is a lens lab. And so, but we get some ideas of, of how to figure out things like focal lengths. So let's take a look at a spherical lens. Uh, lenses operate using not the law of reflection, but the law of refraction. The law of refraction says, again, once again, here's the normal. And this is, this is a chunk of glass or whatever, we will be using glass lenses. This is a chunk of glass, and we have another ray of light coming in. So ray of light coming in like this. Uh, and when it hits the glass, and you know this, if you've ever been out boating and you stick an oar in the water, the oar looks like it's bent right at the surface of the water. Uh, or not bent, but kinked, I guess is a better word, at the surface of the water. And what happens is, uh, because of the law of refraction, the, this angle here and this angle here are going to be different. Uh, light, when light goes from something like air or a vacuum into something more dense like plastic or glass, it's, we say it's, quote, bent towards the normal or refracted towards the normal or kinked towards the normal. It's probably a better way to put it. So this is the incident angle. This is the refracted angle. And Snell's law says that the uh, sine of the incident angle over the sine of the refracted angle is equal to, uh, let's see, 
we'll call this we'll call this glass glass has what's called an index refraction and this is air it doesn't have to be air but we're going to be it's going to be air for us and so this has an index refraction uh, of one and the, and for glass the index refraction for glass is something like 1.6 in the next lab you're going to do which is the uh, spectroscope lab you're going to actually find the index refraction of the glass prism so it's going to be about 1.6 or something like that so when you go from a peer, from something with a smaller index refraction to something with a larger index refraction let's say it over again uh, the the ray is kinked towards the normal and this angle is smaller than this angle so uh, Snell's law since this angle is smaller than this angle uh, the sign of a bigger angle is bigger, so we ha this is n uh, one over sorry n two over n one. So that's Snell's law. That's the law that governs refraction. Um, now this is a, a spherical lens is a lot more complicated because it doesn't have again uh, like the spherical mirror surface that has different shapes to its surface and as you go along the surface the geometry changes it gets a little more complicated okay so here is what's called a double convex mirror so the principal axis here is perpendicular to the lens there right like this is the principal axis turns out uh, that uh, if you apply Snell's law, which we talked about just a minute ago, uh, uh, light coming in here, a ray of light coming in, this is another one of those paraaxial rays. If we look at the situation here, draw the normal to the curve uh, of the lens there, right there, and we see that, uh, again, this angle here is, this angle here is smaller than that angle there by Snell's Thing with less index refraction like air the the ray is bent away from the normal okay so we have two uh, kinked rays or bent rays here uh, towards normal and away from normal uh, from our from our idea of Snell's law so so here's this ray coming along it's bent this way and it's bent this way and it goes over here and this distance here from the center of this lens, we're going to talk about thin lenses, so we're going to assume this, this distance is really small compared to this distance out here. So the, the focal length is the distance from the center of the mirror to where these paraaxial rays come through and go across the, uh, hit the principal axis. So all paraaxial rays are going to do that. If we applied Snell's law to the next ray, this ray here, it would look like that another ray down here would look like that another ray out here would look like that and so this distance here is the focal length for a thin lens so again lenses are more complicated so um, the, the focal length of the lens of a lens This is given by this nasty little formula here, where uh, this, if this is the first surface and that's the second surface that the light encounters, uh, this, this is radius one and this is radius two. Radius one over to here, that's R1, and radius two is radius over to here. So these are all the dimensions you put in here. You put in the index refraction of the glass itself, and this gives you the focal length, which means that's the, that's the point from the middle of the lens where parallel rays, parallel, paraaxial rays, converge to what's called the focal point. I'm going to call big F the focal length and little f the focal point. So uh, this, is, this is the first experiment we're going to do, and that's we're going to find with a lens 
and periaxial rays. Periaxial rays are just rays of light coming from a source way, way out here, comparatively, so at a long distance. So the rays of light spread out, as you can imagine, from a source. But if you're far enough away from the source, like the sun, the rays, the light rays from the sun are basically hitting the Earth, and, and they're all parallel to the Earth because they're 93 million miles away from the sun. And by the time they get here, the rays are essentially parallel to each other. This is, the, this is the formula for the focal length of uh, a lens, which we're not going to explore, except you need to know that it's the same uh, concept as the focal length from the mirror, uh, the center of the mirror, to where the parallel rays hitting the mirror or the lens converge. That would be the focal point. So we're going to do that first experiment. And uh, this is a pretty neat little gizmo here. So this is the... This is our optical bench. I can kind of show you the, the, uh, the theory and uh, the bench itself, the, how you're going to do this experiment. And so here is a lens. This is lens B. And uh, this has a little magnet on the bottom. This says that this has got a magnetic or metal strip. So it's the lens stays where you put it. Uh, this lens also uh, there's two sides to everything, of course, and uh, this lens, the, the, there's a cutout part on the side, and we'll get a close-up picture of that, and there's a not cutout part. So you want to have the cutout part facing uh, the scale down here. This is a 30 centimeter scale, and so when you put that there, the, the center of the lens is not where the shoulder is by the cutout, but you can see the center of, you can see the edge of the lens. It's, it's a ground glass lens, and you can see that it, it might be like a millimeter this way of this, of this, uh, this cutout, this cutout insert. So you've got to estimate the center of the lens, because that's where the focal length starts, from the center of the lens to where parallel rays coming in the lens from a long, from a distant source, come to a point. Okay, so here's my distant source. And this is distance enough because this lens has a focal length of about four centimeters. And this is like 50, 60 centimeters. So it's pretty much far away. So if you look, I'll turn this a little bit to the side. If you look through here, and, and you will see that if you shine this light right, right at, and it, you know, pretty far away, shine this light right at the lens, you'll see that uh, as you move, as I move this uh, card back and forth, uh, you will see there's a point where the rays converge, which basically means the more or less parallel rays from this flashlight uh, come to a point, and that point is the focal point. And the distance between that focal point and the lens is, the center of the lens, is the focal length. So experiment number one is finding the focal length for a bunch of lenses. Okay. Uh, again, this lens is about four centimeters, uh, it's an inch and a half or so. And so uh, you want to find that focal length. And of course, in this experiment, uh, in any experiment, if you can easily do something over like three or four times, please do it over three or four times and take an average value because that also not only gives you a better value for the focal length, it also gives you a maximum deviation, which means you've got an error for that focal length value, which is very nice. So maybe this is 4.1 centimeters and the worst reading I got was 4.3 and the other reading I got was 3.9. Uh, centimeters when I did it three or four times and the, the highest and lowest value so the error is 0.2 centimeters out of four centimeters which is uh, five percent right okay so you can get the error and this value for the focal length very easily just like that I did that in my head and you can do it you're in your head around a piece of paper so that's that, that's experiment number one okay there are five different experiments, which are kind of all very interesting. So, so we now know what the focal length, how to f figure out the focal length of a lens. It's a rather complicated thing. It depends on the radius of curvature of the two surfaces and what the lens is made out of. Uh, again, you'll get into that more in, in class. 
but we just need we're just exploring the relationship between the focal length of a lens and what's called an object and an image. We're going to put an object uh, here and we're going to form an image here on the other side of the lens. Uh, and we're going to measure those distances and we want to relate the object distance and the image distance to the focal length. So let's start over again and do that. <coughs> we're going to measure the focal length of these lenses, not calculate them. So that's the first experiment, which is important to do carefully because that gives us an error estimate for the rest of our experiment. Okay, so we have here what's called, which the directions call a stage mount, which is kind of a strange and maybe name, but you can put this on and uh, it's got a little knob uh, that sometimes helps you and sometimes doesn't uh, run it back and forth and maybe just run it back and forth. And we have a card here, uh, which we can put in place. And we need uh, an object. So the object is, this is not a lens, it's a, 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 a millimeter scale. So this is a bunch of horizontal lines that are a millimeter apart. Pretty fine. Okay. And it's in a little circular mount. So I'm going to put this here uh, with the with the shoulder pointing outward. Now you can you can pretty much assume that this scale is right at the shoulder uh, because it's a thin piece of plastic. Okay, so now I'm going to light the reticle up. The object is the reticle, not the flashlight anymore, but the object is the reticle. And if I shine a light on that reticle, uh, and I can get it as close as I want, you can see that, well, you can see in a minute that if you get these uh, adjusted properly. All right, so I have eliminated the reticle, which is at zero on the scale, and I've got lens B, which is about a four centimeter focal length lens, about four centimeters away. And I'm going to move this back and forth until I get the sharpest image over there. Okay, so let's just say, for sake of argument, that's the sharpest image. Okay, so uh, the distance from the reticle to the center of the lens is called the object distance. I'm going to label that P. And the distance from the lens, center of the lens, to the screen is the image distance, which I'm going to label Q. Okay, now I've got, you'll have some millimeter scales. Uh, and what, I, what you should do is put this millimeter scale like halfway be halfway on that clip so that you can eliminate this again and you can see the sharp lines on the left and you can see the millimeter scale on the right. So pretty obviously those sharp lines are more than a millimeter apart. Maybe they're four millimeters apart. And you can measure that with, this, with, this, with the card here. So if they're four millimeters apart, if the image is four millimeters apart or image is four millimeters high and the object is one millimeter high, then you have a magnification of four over one or four. Okay, so that's how we find magnification. So we have object distance, image distance, focal length, which you already know about, and we have this concept of magnification, which means the image is bigger here than the object by I'm going to guess without looking carefully at it four times. So measure that carefully. And, and maybe, maybe the best way to measure that is to measure three or four distances and count the number of millimeters up here and then divide that by four to get the, uh, say, four, four, four distances, uh, four lines, and, and uh, take a better average that way. So in other words, just don't measure the distance between two lines. Measure the distance between 
a distance between five lines, which is four distances, and measure that distance on the millimeter scale and divide your answer by four to get a more accurate uh, value for the magnification. Okay, so here's my principal axis again. Let me draw a picture of this. This is lens B, uh, which is about four millimeters. Here's my reticle, which I'm going to say is the object distance P, and I'm, I've got this screen over here, uh, and next to it I have split, and in, in, on, the, on the right half I have my millimeter mark, and I have then big lines over here that are four or five millimeters apart, so the magnification's four or five, and the distance from the center of the lens to the screen is P is, is Q. So Q and P are related, and the mathematics here is a little bit complicated, uh, but we have this formula here, which is called the lens maker's equation. It's also called the mirror equation, because we didn't go th through this since it's not a mirror experiment. We didn't do an experiment with mirrors and objects and images, but we could have. And in fact, it uses the same equation, except the focal length for a mirror is a lot simpler than the focal length for a lens. But it's still the same concept. It's the focal length. It's where parallel rays come through the, paraxial rays come through the uh, lens or, or uh, hit the mirror, whichever, and they bounce off or go through the lens in this case, uh, and they converge at a point called the focal point. So we have the same concept here. So this is the lens maker's equa equation, and it's also the mirror equation, but different definitions for the focal length. The minus takes a little explaining because we don't have an object here that has an up or down. We just have a scale. But if we had an object that was up or down, for instance, if I had a little arrow here, and I adjusted this, and I looked at the screen here, the arrow would be magnified by whatever factor you calculated, but it would also be pointing down. It would be a large arrow pointing down. Uh, if you do a little ray tracing, the rays would look like this. Uh, and whoops. These rays would cross at that point there, and that would be uh, the location of the object. So uh, these are the two these are the two rays that we that you will use uh, in uh, in your homework uh, when uh, analyzing lenses. This is the periaxial ray which we know goes through the focal point and keeps going. This is ray number 2 which is the ray that goes through the center of the lens. And, and this image, really, this is an exaggerated picture. This, this is only one millimeter, right? And it's 50 millimeters away. So really, that arrow is a really very small arrow. It's not like this. And so this arrow is actually parallel to the principal axis. And when a ray is, is parallel to the principal axis, it hits the mirror, it hits the lens, sorry, at, at uh, normal incidence at, at a right angle. And Snell's law gives you nothing, in other words, it just goes straight through, right straight through. So this ray here just goes straight through the lens, even though this is a distorted picture. I actually I have a lens and a little bitty object here, and, and uh, it's far away, and the rays go through pretty much the middle of the lens. So the ray that goes through the middle of the lens hits the lens at a right angle, and it doesn't do anything. Snell's law doesn't give you anything. Uh, uh, the sine of uh, zero degrees is zero. Don't, don't forget you measure from the normal. And so uh, Snell's law doesn't apply to this ray. It just goes straight through. This ray, Snell's law applies right here and here. And, and the ray bends and goes through the focal length. And then these rays converge at the image, which is at the image distance from the center of the lens. So measure the center, measure these distances, see how this works, see that you can substantiate this relationship uh, one way or the other. Uh, 
assume you don't know one of these and calculate it, or use this distance and this distance to calculate the focal length. That might be smarter because this gives you actually a more accurate value of the focal length. So you might have gotten 4.1 plus or minus 0.2 uh, in your first attempt to find the focal length, but when you use P and Q, which are uh, uh, numbers that are much more accurate, you can measure those carefully to more significant figures, you get a much better value for the focal length. So I would use part B or part 2 to calculate the focal lengths, knowing this and this much better than your first experiment. And subsequently, I would use the focal lengths that you get in part 2 uh, for the rest of the lab. So calculate the focal length uh, using P and Q. Calculate the magnification and also take Q divided by P and see if that's the same as the magnification you get on the screen here. I counted four roughly uh, millimeters between lines and so the magnification should be four. That means this is four times bigger than that. Okay, that's part one, that's part two. And they deal with focal length first and second law, second, secondly, uh, getting the focal length using this much more accurate uh, lens maker's formula, knowing P and knowing Q. Okay, now it's going to be impossible for me to show some of the remaining of the, uh, of the uh, demonstrate some of the remaining of the lab because that's going to deal with virtual images. Virtual images means images that cannot form on a piece of paper like this. Uh, you can't look at them, you can't project them. You don't go to the movies to see virtual images, you go to the movies to see real images on the screen. And so uh, the problem with the remaining parts of this lab is that your eye, which is another lens, is, has become part of the lens system and everybody's eye is a little bit different. And so even if your partner and you do the same experiment with different eyes, you're going to get slightly different answers. And so your partner's right and you're right because you have a different lens than your partner does. Uh, so, uh, so I can draw pictures of what you're going to get for the next uh, three setups. And then the next setup is to find the uh, magnification of a, a simple magnifier. Sometimes these are called simple microscope. Uh, in fact, uh, if you have uh, a little glass that, you, that maybe your folks or your grandparents need to read a little bit more clearly what's on the piece of paper, uh, they are using a simple magnifier. It makes things look a little bit bigger. Uh, unlike the, the case here for real images, Virtual images are not inverted; they're right side up. So when you do, when you use a simple magnifier, uh, you don't see things upside down. You things right side, you see things right side up, and bigger, which is its purpose. Okay, so if you uh, if you collect stamps and there's the, the printing on the stamp is really fine, you take a little reading glass, uh, which is a converging lens, and you put it close to the uh, paper, and you can see a bigger image of the stamp. Only you can see that uh, because it's a virtual image. You have to look through the lens to see it. By the way, the harder you try to do this, the harder it is. So just kind of relax and let your eyes do what needs to be done. We'll, we'll talk about what needs to be done in a minute. So here's the situation. If we have lens, I've got lens B here, for instance. We're going to put the reticle uh, at, a, at one focal length away, which is about four centimeters. Uh, and it, this will need to be moved back and forth to adjust this distance until the reticle is clear in your eyes. Again, uh, we have uh, a lens here and we have a lens in your eye. Everybody's eye is a bit different. And so, you know, I can't tell you set it at 26 and that's going to be clear. Uh, you have to move it back and forth till you look through this lens and see this, which is clear. So, in a sense, what you're doing is, is changing the distance of closest vision from 25 centimeters, which is kind of the standard uh, distance used, to uh, four centimeters. Obviously, uh, even if you have young eye, younger eyes than I have, uh, when I put my hand up here four centimeters away from my eye, 
everything is blurry. However, my hand does look bigger, which is magnification. So uh, our distance of closest clear vision, we're going to take as standard 25 centimeters. So, uh, so this, this is, uh, here's your eye, this is 25 centimeters. And uh, uh, if you looked with your other eye, right at this piece of paper here, which is 25 centimeters away roughly from your eye as you have it right up next to this lens, your other eye, uh, then you'll see this scale clearly. And you'll also see this scale clearly, but it's only four or five centimeters from your eye. It looks four or five times bigger uh, because it's, uh, it's closer to the eyeball. So uh, this is the, the basic idea of a simple magnifier. And uh, if you want to read this more carefully, you can do this with a simple magnifier. But we want to compare it to its, its actual size, which is one millimeter spaced lines. And this piece of graph paper here has one millimeter spaced lines. So you're comparing apples to apples here in terms of the distance between these two lines. So if you look with one eye through the lens, you'll see this clearly adjust that little bit till it is clear. And then when you look at the other, with the other eye at this scale, uh, which you can see clearly without the lens, uh, that's your distance of closest vision, you will see a millimeter scale here and a millimeter scale here. But this looks way bigger because the lens has helped you get it closer to your eye to make it look bigger clearly. So this is the idea of a simple magnifier if you collect stamps or you need to read the fine print on a contract or something, uh, you get a lens out here with a handle and get it close to your eye and you can read that contract or that read the fine printing on that stamp or whatever you want to look at very carefully. So this is the idea of a simple magnifier and the uh, magnification here uh, is, is formula uh, number four, the magnification is 25 centimeters over the focal length in centimeters, of course, plus one. Uh, this has to do with the fact that you're looking at something at 25 centimeters away and not out at infinity. That would be where you would need a telescope, which is what we're going to do next. So this is a virtual image. Only this eye sees this. Your other eye should see it. Look at this, and it should see it clearly because it's within your distance of closest clear vision, uh, and you have to superpose those, uh, the, the reticle and the scale in your mind. And as I say, don't try hard because let your eyes figure out what they've got to do, and I think they will figure it out. It's easier for some people than others, so uh, if you really, really can't do it, that's what you have a partner for. So that's part uh, three, and we want to do that for uh, two different lenses and see what kind of magnification we get, uh, the actual magnification and the magnification given by this formula using the values of the focal length that you got from experiment number two, which is or which are better. So, okay, so let's take a look at or experiment four, which is to build a uh, two different with two different lenses lens systems, a uh, uh, couple telescopes. Okay, so telescopes obviously are used to make something that's far away, not right next to your nose, uh, look bigger. Okay, so the, the image there forms at infinity. So the, the light coming in from the image is going to come to a, to a focal point, uh, this being the objective lens here. So the light's coming from a distant object and going through this lens and coming to a point. And if we put uh, uh, this, the, if we put this lens uh, a focal length away from that point where the image forms from lens D, it uh, gives you the biggest magnification. So the distance between these two lenses is equal to the focal length of D plus the focal length of E. So you kind of know where to set them uh, when you start this experiment because you know what these focal lengths are. Uh, okay, so uh, when you look through here, as you would with a telescope, you see uh, an image, you see an inverted image, uh, but it's very much magnified, and it's, it's brought closer to you by this telescope. So uh, 
again, I can't show you how, how this works because with one eye you have to look at the object, distant object, uh, and then with the other eye look directly at the distant object and then put those two together in your mind. Now what we're going to have on the board over here are going to be some equally spaced lines, I think 10 centimeters apart, and then when you uh, look at them at a distance on the other side of the room, they're going to be so big, but you look at them through the telescope, they're going to be much farther apart. So for instance, if on the tele in the telescope you see a line here and a line here, and the next line way up there and way down there, then we have a magnification of three. One, two, three spaces. Count the spaces. So if this is what you see with your eye, magnified eye through the telescope, and this is what you see with your naked eye, so to speak, just looking straight at the board, and you see this, you'll see a magnification of three. So check that out. Again, you have to scooch those lenses a little bit back and forth, uh, especially the objective, leave the eyepiece alone, and until, you're, until it's clear to you, and also make sure your partner sees what's going on and it's clear to that person as well. And they may get a slightly different magnification than you, but they're right and you're right because there's a third eye and there's a third lens involved, not a third eye, there's a third lens involved, which is your eye. Okay, so that's part D. Take some numbers down uh, from uh, the positions of the lenses on the uh, uh, optical bench and do some calculations based on the equations in part in experiment four. Okay, so the last part uh, is, is to build a microscope. And this microscope is going to have a magnification of somewhere in the ballpark of 25 or 30. So it's a pretty powerful uh, microscope. So part uh, experiment five is, is, uh, takes two steps. First of all, you have to set up uh, the objective, then you have to set up the eyepiece. So uh, let, me, let me do that. Here is uh, the microscope experiment, which as I say, gives you a magnification of around 25 or so, I think, depending on your eyeball, because again, we have lens A and we're going to have lens B and we're going to have your lens and your eye, which is going to be different for each person, so you're going to get different answers. So we're going to basically do, uh, for step one of the last part of the experiment, uh, we're going to basically repeat experiment two over again uh, to set up the uh, objective. So the objective is A, it's going to be at six centimeters, your, your reticle is going to be at one centimeter, and as we did in experiment two, we're going to shine our light here right up against the reticle, and, <clears throat> and I could show you this because it, it does form a real image. you already seen this in part two. So I'm going to shine this light uh, uh, against this reticle through lens A, and of course, uh, this will form an image. So this this is P, and this is Q. And so we can see we have a magnification here of about three or so because uh, this distance here is 18 and this distance is six. 18 over six is three. So we're gonna have, this is gonna produce a magnification of about three. Then we're gonna put our eyepiece, which is lens B, right about one centimeter, at uh, 28 or 29 centimeters, sorry. Uh, and you'll have to move that around until you see a, a clear image of the reticle. So you'll see uh, this produces a magnification many times three. So we have a magnification of three here, and we'll have an additional magnification. The formula uh, for, uh, of course, the magnification in part two was uh, uh, the magnification is 25 centimeters over F plus 1. That's going to be something like 3, at least as far as I can see. And then, uh, then you're going to multiply that magnification, since you're magnifying that image, by uh, uh, 25 over F, uh, uh, F of B. And F of B is about 6. And so this is going to be about 4 times this, or 3 times three times four, or uh, wait, the focal length is, is about four 
uh, centimeters, sorry. So this is about six or seven. This is about three. So six or seven times three is going to be somewhere in the low 20s, probably. So the, the formula, uh, the, this is magnification from A. This is magnification from B. So the total magnification is uh, 25 over F plus 1 times 25 over 4, roughly. Again, use the value for the focal length of B that you measured in part 2 uh, this way uh, to get the most accurate value. So this is another uh, superposition of images idea. So when you look through, when you look through the eyepiece, you're going to see a very large image, a very large image, something like 20 times or more uh, of the reticle. So you're going to see reticles that are 20 millimeters apart instead of one millimeter apart. So you need then, this is where your partner comes in, you need to hold uh, your scale, your one millimeter scale, uh, at the same place that your one millimeter, the real one millimeter reticle scale is. And with your other eye, look at this scale, with this eye through the lens, uh, which is, gives you the magnified, magnified reticle, and you should see the lines something like, something roughly 25 times, 25 millimeters apart instead of one millimeter apart with your other, uh, the naked eye that's looking directly at this page, which is uh, 25 or 30 centimeters away, which is your distance of closest vision again. So uh, that's the experiment.